All right, folks, welcome back to AWS Simplified, the place where I teach you everything there is to know about AWS. And today we're going to be talking about hooking up a step function to DynamoDB. Now, keep in mind, this isn't going to be using any kind of Lambda or any kind of intermediary processing step in between. It's going to be strictly through step functions, ADSL language. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to go over here to DynamoDB. We're going to click on create table. That's going to be called transaction history table. And we're going to set our primary key or our petition key to transaction ID. Not going to worry about sort key or anything else. Going to leave everything here default. Click on create. It's going to take probably a minute or so to create. In the meantime, we're going to go to our step function and define it. So going to step functions, uh, click on create state machine. And we're going to call this step function the transaction processor um, and state machine definition. So I pre-prepared a JSON here of an ADSL input. So I'm just going to paste that in and walk you through what's going on. So at the beginning here, we just have a comment stating what it is. We're saying that we want to start at this step, the process transaction step. You can see here's the visual representation of that. We're starting that process transaction. And the process transaction is just a pass through. It's not doing anything. It's just for cosmetic reasons. And we're saying the next step is the store history task, which is right here. And this is really where all the work is being done. So we see that it's of type task and the resource that it's going to be accessing is DynamoDB's put item API, because we're going to be inserting a row into DynamoDB in this example. And you need a few input parameters. So firstly, we must specify our table name. And like we saw before, I'm using the transaction history table as the name. Now here we're talking about the item properties or what we're going to actually be inserting into the table. So we're defining the key here. So transaction ID is the key. And we're saying in this notation that it's of type string. And recall that we're going to be using transaction ID as the input to the step function. So what this notation here is doing is it's saying refer to the input with the key transaction ID. Uh, you can very easily hard code this. So if you want to put something like foo or one, two, three, four, five, whatever you want, if you wanted to always put that value in, that's fine too. Since we want it to be set dynamically, we're going to be using this notation here. And we're also quickly adding a retry policy on this step. So what we're saying in this notation is in any error case, so whether that's uh, optimistic locking, provision throughput, anything like that, I want to retry. And there's going to be a one second interval between each retry. And I want to retry it a maximum of three times. And that's what this notation is saying here. The end indicates that this is the terminal step. Uh, so you can see it goes to end after this is completed. And result path using this notation here is saying what to pipe into the next step provided one exists. But for us, one doesn't exist, so it doesn't really matter. So that's the, about it for the step function. We're going to click on next. We need to define an important IAM role here. And we're going to say uh, step function IAM role. Simplified. And there's a neat feature here where since step function knows that you're accessing DynamoDB according to our ADSL, it's going to create a role that has the permission that you need to access DynamoDB. And that's what it's saying here. You have a policy template that's been automatically applied, and this is the name of it. And the description is that it allows step functions to perform DynamoDB actions on your behalf. So that's a neat little feature here. If you wanted to add a step to write to DynamoDB into a step function that already exists, then you would need to add uh, put item permissions to your role. Uh, we're going to click on create state machine now. And there you go. So it's created and we want to test it out. So we're going to scroll down, go to start execution and we're going to set our input. So recall, I mentioned we want to set a dynamic input. So I'm going to set a transaction ID and that's going to be set to 900FC1. Click on start execution. And we can see by the time we even scroll down, it was already completed. Uh, so we click on this, we can see some additional details. We can see the input was as I wrote uh, with the transaction ID and the value here. And on this step where it actually wrote to Dynamo, if you take a look at the output, you can see this is the output from Dynamo with the 200 OK. So let's just check Dynamo real quick to see if that row is in there. Okay, click in there, items, and there is our row. Perfect. 
Thanks so much for watching, guys. If there's any questions you may have or topics you'd like me to cover, please feel free to leave a comment in the comments section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.